So here before me I have the DualSense Edge and the Nikon Revolution 5 Pro. These are the cutting edge of customizable controllers, one produced by Sony, the other by Nikon but officially licensed for PlayStation. So today I'm going to break down everything from design to features to uncover which of these is worth your hard earned cash. Hello everyone, it's Aiden here from Push Square and let's get into it. The DualSense Edge and Nikon Revolution 5 Pro are pro controllers that specialise in competitive play. They boast customisable elements such as back paddles, interchangeable thumbsticks and tweaked trigger settings. Both will set you back a pretty penny with the DualSense Edge coming in at £210 and the 5 Pro coming in a little lower at £200. Both controllers come with their own cases which are filled with the controller itself, threaded charging wires and customisable parts. Additionally, the Edge includes a cable lock for your charging wire and while the Edge has a mic built in, the 5 Pro has an attachable mic which doesn't really get in the way but doesn't look the nicest either. The Nacon case is a little more basic and rugged with this flexible yet tough material with the Nacon name emboldened on the front and it features a pretty solid zip. The Edge goes for a hard white exterior shell, a slightly less encouraging zip but wins some brownie points for including this velcro flap allowing for your controller to charge within the case. Both sport this evocative black and white colour design with the edge sticking fairly close to its DualSense counterpart form wise and Nikon going for a larger asymmetrical design which is also available in black. Nikon of course is heavily leaning into the PlayStation side of things with the touchpad, share, option, mute and home button with the home button having a PS logo on the front as well. But of course if you want to get the authentic Sony appeal, the Edge features a Meteor touchpad, PS logo shaped home button and of course the button shapes imprinted on the grips, touchpad and tips of the triggers. The Edge definitely feels heavier and therefore a little higher quality in the hand but in a weird feature you can actually include one of the many weights on either side of the Nacon controller to find the right weight for you. The feel of the buttons on the PlayStation are a little more tactile and less travelled whereas the Nacon buttons feel a little on the cheaper side. However, unlike the Edge, it can swap out its 4-directional D-pad for an 8-directional one. And lastly, in the flash department, the Nacon features an LED ring light around the right thumbstick, as well as small lights around the touchpad. And of course, the Edge has the signature PlayStation Blue of colour around the touchpad as well. So those are the basics that you can expect straight out of the box. But what are the discernible differences between two controllers that from the outset look very, very similar? Well let's break it down stage by stage with the customizable aspects of both controllers. Now let's start off with the back paddles. On the edge you have two paddles which can be switched between longer arms and shorter nuts. They can also be removed entirely if you decide not to use them during a session for whatever reason. The 5 Pro has four buttons on the back of the controller, all of which are integrated and unchangeable. The Nacon buttons have a nice clicky feel to them, although they are quite easy to accidentally push. Now of course accidental pushes are also a thing on the DualSense Edge but button presses here do feel a bit more deliberate. Moving on to the triggers, I actually really like the feeling of the Nacon ones which felt a bit more snappy and akin to the Xbox controller triggers. If you've used the DualSense before, the Edge triggers are exactly the same. But what we're interested in is this little switch which allows you to shorten or lengthen the travel distance of each trigger individually. Both are really easy to customise with the DualSense Edge having three lengths points and the Nikon having two. Thumbsticks are where things really start to get interesting though between these two controllers. Firstly, each has a number of thumbstick tops to consider. The Edge comes with its regular indented thumbsticks but they can be swapped out for taller or shorter round top thumbsticks. The 5 Pro has three different styles of thumbsticks, indented, textured and raised blockier tops. It's definitely easier to remove and attach thumbsticks on the DualSense as the 5 Pro requires a specific angle to attach them. The 5 Pro also has these metal rings which can change the space that the thumbstick has to move around in if you want to keep things a bit tighter. The big difference though is in the type of joystick mechanism that each controller uses. As is infamously the case, the DualSense can be prone to stick drift with heavy usage. The way Sony counters this with its Pro controller is by making the joystick drive removable and replaceable. You can Buy a new one for roughly £20, saving you the hassle of entirely replacing your controller. The Nacon goes a step further though by implementing the magnetic hall effect for its thumbsticks. This means that thumbsticks feel lighter but aren't prone to mechanism degradation, essentially eliminating the threat of stick drift. Okay, it's time to talk about how user friendly either of these controllers are, from the customization process to just 
connecting them to your PS5. After connecting to your PS5 via USB A to C cable, you can wirelessly connect your DualSense Edge just as you would with your regular controller. The Revolution 5 Pro uses a dongle for wireless play but also supports a wired connection with its USB A to C cable. Both processes are relatively simple. Now customising each controller is a slightly different tale. The Edge has a fantastic customization process baked into the PS5 itself. By holding down one of the two FN buttons and then the Options button, you can begin to work your way through button assignment, stick and trigger dead zones, and vibration and trigger effect intensity. With the mandatory default profile, you can add three more custom controller profiles, which you can easily switch between in a moment's notice by holding FN and pressing the corresponding face button. The Nacon Revolution 5 Pro, as of recording, requires an additional step. You're going to have to download and access the controller's app via PC desktop to customise any of its four assignable profiles. There is a mobile app that will make things easier, but this isn't scheduled to launch until 2024. However, the wealth of customisable options is greater than that available through the DualSense Edge, and you will really notice the precision of those Hall Effect thumbsticks here. With more things to tweak, I found it a little more frustrating having to go back and forth between playing in console and mixing things up on PC. Whereas if I had an idea for controller profile changes on the DualSense, I could do that within a minute without really interrupting my session. Thankfully though, once you have everything in order, switching profiles on the 5 Pro is pretty simple as it's just the tap of the profile button on the back of the controller. If you do decide to play things wirelessly then you can expect around 10 hours from your Revolution 5 Pro and roughly 6 hours with the DualSense Edge. Now I've left this part of the comparison to last because it concerns a really big difference between these two controllers and it's all to do with vibration. One of the biggest selling points of the Edge was that it has the customizable elements mixed in with those immersive haptic features. The Revolution 5 Pro doesn't have haptic feedback or adaptive triggers, which is entirely expected. What isn't expected though is that the 5 Pro doesn't actually have any vibration for PS5 games. There are light rumbles in both PC titles and PS4 games, but a certain technology with controller and console and PS5 games means that PS5 games just have to go without it. Now in the day to day I found this to be a rather disappointing omission. While both controllers are brilliant for your twitchy shooters or combo building fighters, when not playing games like that I like to use my DualSense Edge in a rather mundane way, like rebinding buttons so I didn't need to hold circle to run in Elden Ring. While these aspects were boring, I still got that immersive form of haptic feedback and that customizable element in there too. However, without vibrations, the Revolution 5 Pro doesn't feel as versatile. Now will this be a major setback for those that are looking for a pro controller to specifically boost their response times? No, not at all. Sometimes these vibrations only serve to slow you down when things get competitive anyway. Ultimately though, where are we landing? With Sony's own DualSense Edge or the Nikon Revolution 5 Pro? I think it depends on the type of experience you're looking for. If you had a scale of not very customizable to very customizable, the DualSense Edge would land somewhere in the middle with the Nikon Revolution 5 Pro being slightly higher up. Now that is really the big question of what type of experience you're looking for. I found the DualSense Edge to be the best of both worlds. It's immersive and it's customizable, whereas the Revolution 5 Pro is just customizable. Additionally, the DualSense Edge is a bit more user friendly. It has a better build quality, but I did really come to appreciate the form factor of the 5 Pro, I think it actually might be slightly more comfortable for those longer sessions. So yeah, it really depends on what camp you're landing on. If you like to play some competitive games, but also like to have your immersive single player titles, this is probably a better pick, but the Revolution 5 Pro is made for those people that are diehards on games like Apex Legends, maybe Street Fighter 6, whatever the competitive game that you really need to commit yourself to, this is a solid controller for just that. So, I hope you found this video useful and packed full of information. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. And when you're down there, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're in the market for more PlayStation video content just like this. Anyway, I appreciate you as always. And until next time, I've been Aiden, and this has been Push Square. See you later.